Welcome to Kasao, Mukono district in central Uganda. Here, Mariam never turns is like any other woman if you walked past her. But get to her home and you may be forgiven for thinking this is the boarding section of a school. Nabatanzi is 39 years old and has mothered 44 children already. 38 are alive today. You heard right, 44 children, all delivered normally. Everything here is done massively with near military precision. 22 kilograms of maize or corn flour, 7 kilograms of beans, 2.5 kilograms of sugar. That's the daily feed for this humongous family. I lost count of how many breads they ate. I'm in the middle of a huge operation, feeding operation. It's like a military operation. Feeding bread and porridge, that is for breakfast, to 24 kids out of the 38. It's just unbelievable. I can't tell who is who. I just wonder how the mom does it. They've just finished now, just been serving bread uh, and porridge. And some guys were coming back for a second take. Their mom could recognize and say, you just come for a double. But some would actually get away with it. It's quite an interesting, extraordinary family, I should say. Question is, how did this all begin for Navatanzi? First, she was married off too young, aged 13, and started having children immediately. In my heart, I wished to have six children. I gave birth four times, and on each occasion, I had twins. Eight children were more than what I had bargained for. I went to hospital to ask the doctors to stop me from having babies. The doctors carried out tests and said it would be risking my life if they stopped me. I was too fertile to stop. I went back home and conceived quintuplets. Five children at once and then two times more. With 23 kids, I thought it was too much and I went back to hospital. But the doctors said they couldn't stop me without risking death. I was pretty healthy having natural births. Gynecologists say it's possible to be this fertile, although not commonplace. But once you have these many children, my question then is, how hard is it to name these children? We both <laughs> to a bout of laughter. <laughs> we use different <laughs> names. First, when I started having twins, I bought a book of names. So I'd pick names from there. Then my husband is Catholic. And I'm Muslim. So don't be surprised to see a Muhammad, then a Dennis. We'd pick from each side. Then we looked for ancestral names. When the numbers got bigger, I began picking names of my favorite movies, especially in Hollywood. I've got Ciara's, Precious Ozokwa, Desmond Elliot, Genevieve Naji, and so on. When you hear this kind of story, you must be wondering where the man responsible for all this procreation is. Well, when I pose this question, Mariam's lead face suddenly turned sad. I have had to put up with a lot. He's tortured me so much. He abused me, beat me up sometimes, and threatened to kill me once. He pays no school fees, nor does he even know what we survive. Unashamedly, he comes and eats what he doesn't leave home. He's not part of his children's lives. Where we are now, I bought with my own money and from doing little jobs here and there. He was in utter shock to learn I'd bought and built this place. Her biggest challenge is looking after these children with an absentee father, foremost of which is school fees and feeding the children. Fourteen of her children are in primary school, where she has to pay more than five million shillings in school dues per term. This is equivalent to around a thousand five hundred dollars. Another ten children are in secondary school. Some have been forced to drop out of school as the bill spirals out of control. Her dream is to educate all her children so that they may get a better life, not like what she's been through. To find all this, she learned skills including care making, decoration, tailoring, 